uh, report about Boston uh, that I think is important. And this is really Plymouth, Massachusetts, which is such an interesting thing because Plymouth, um, Plymouth is called Plymouth Plantation. And for folks, I mean, if you can think back to all those heinous, racist, horrible places that you were probably brought to when you were a child, Plymouth Plantation was one of the things, I, I, I grew up in, in Massachusetts and Boston, and it was something that every school child, they thought it was educational, it was informative, and you were brought there, and you had no choice. You boarded a bus and this is what happened. And um, I think the thing that's really important about National Day of Mourning, one, that is, it comes from uh, not only is a complete and utter struggle to what the myth of quote unquote Thanksgiving is about, but the fact that at this point in time it is a peaceful protest. We fought for the right for it to be a peaceful protest, to not be bashed and, and beaten up by the police, to even have the right to speak at Coles Hill was an actual struggle that people fought and won. And it's kind of interesting now that people have been going for, we've been sending a bus to from New York, since the mid-90s, since the major struggle in 96, 97, people have sort of seen it and said like, oh, it's something that we do every year as a sort of alternate to um, so-called Thanksgiving. But in the beginning, it was a struggle that was uh, incredibly intense. Where, um, so from the very first National Day of Mourning, uh, Wasota James, who is Monanum James' father, who is the head and lead, one of the co-leaders of United American Indians of New England, who are comrades who um, have, you know, again, the, the Boston branch has a long, long history because of the indigenous movement in New England itself, and I hate using that word, New England, please, with the understanding of what, of what, of, of what, quote unquote, the North Americas, the North Americas and the Americas are, that there's always always been um, a resistance movement in here in this country to all forms of colonization and imperialism. And so when, um, when Sutter James was asked by, I guess, the, the leaders of the Plymouth communities back in the 70s to give a speech at quote unquote a Thanksgiving, he, it was a protest. And in fact, he had a speech all prepared, ready to sort of shut them down and tell about the truths and they were like, you're not going to do that here. So as an alternative, he he was like, well, we won't do it over here on our own and our own terms and not participate in what it would be the flag waving. And this is really important. When you go to, for those that have been, and just to show fans, how many people have been to National Day of Mourning? It's really awesome. This is good. And it's something uh, some of us have been many times, some of us have been arrested there, some of us have gone there, done, we've had to do legal support. And again, now that we just go and board a bus and we have a meal and we march and everything is awesome, but that's not the way it started. And, not, and, and, and it only is in the, really in the last 10 years that it's been like that. So again, he called this separate alternative event um, and that became National Day of Mourning, so he could give his real speech. So he could tell the real truth about all that has happened, um, you know, with the quote-unquote myth of Thanksgiving, and really talk about the, the brutality that happened to indigenous people on their own land by um, the, the, the settler colonialists um, from, from Europe and, and that history. One of the things that happened back in the 70s were that they would, they would I mean, again, board the board, and let's say it, board the Mayflower and put up the warrior flag instead. They were chased and attacked by dogs and had dogs set on them back in the, in the day. There have been moments in time, they have been, I was about to go there. The rock, that, which is not a, that, that, that whole myth about the fact that it's, there's, there's this rock that, you know, that somehow the Plymouth, the, the, the Plymouth pilgrims like landed on, it's like it came from a quarry, like, you know, not down, down the road somewhere in Massachusetts that they set up and they set up there and they put a little statue and a plaque and said, this is Plymouth Rock, which is not, it's not, you know, it's not true. It's that there's no such thing as this, this myth. And I was going to mention, it is, and an amazing thing, because it's seen, it, they, say, they say it's America's homeland. Literally, that's like the, the way it's. You will meet people from Japan. You will see people from all over Europe. They come, quote unquote, to come to the United States on so-called Thanksgiving. You must go to Plymouth. So you have all of these folks that are here and thinking, this myth that I've heard about, I want to see, it's there, and, and then there's us. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really important that you inform the truth and the reality of what's happening. So again, there have been times that that rock from the quarry has been painted red. That rock on, from the quarry has been buried. 
And, and, and that rock from the quarry, uh, many things have happened to that rock. But many, there's, there, there was a time, there, there was a time where there was another march that happened. It still happens. It's called the Pilgrim's Progress. And so it is the most classist, racist, sexist march. So they have, literally, I'm not joking, you know reenactments, Massachusetts were famous for reenactments. They, uh, Battle Green, all that. They, uh, they have this march where the rich white men, pilgrims, you know, Miles Standish, those folks, they're at the front of the march. Then they're the women. Then they're their indentured servants, like holding up the, um, you know, like the uh, luggage of and carrying it on their backs through the, yes, the in, exactly. So working class people's like ancestry is like, this is what we're doing. We're carrying their luggage and they march around Plymouth. And, and there was a year where, you know, that our march and their march sort of met each other and it wasn't good. <laughs> so. And, and we call it, we refer to Kirschbaum, we call it the Pilgrim's, uh, the P Pilgrim's Panic. And so the Pilgrim's Progress. <laughs> and what happened was that our marches met and they sort of ran into a church. Um, and, 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 and it was said in the, through the Boston Globe and the Herald and all of that that we had destroyed Thanksgiving. That we had, <laughs> we had ruined it. So with that said, and I'm going to wrap up with this, what happened was that then the next year, and I, I could be wrong, I think it's 96 of that, the Pilgrim's Panic happened. 97, am I correct? For the no, but you're right. The year that you guys had, 90 97, because I was in a hotel trying to wean Dahlia, and I saw it on TV, and I was like, those are my comments. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. So Dahlia was weaned the day we were being beaten up. And that was great. That's okay. I'm going to tell her that when I see her. So with that, with that, no, I won't. Um, so with that said, and and so so this is important. 1995, we got beaten up. Um, with the next year, that the that because we had ruined Thanksgiving in 96, we got beaten up. 95 was Pilgrim's Panic. 96. They laid wait for us, and not just state troopers, everything. Like, we usually have them on um, the demonstration, and then we march. And what happened was, is they laid wait, and they attacked us, pepper sprayed us, beat us, dragged us, dragged indigenous people by their hair. They, I, it's, it's an interesting thing, as an LGBT person, um, one of the things that that year of the attack actually ended up as, as, as listed as one of the hate crimes that happened in the year of, two, of 1996 because so many LGBT people were arrested. In fact, a, a gay couple, a white gay couple, um, John and John actually are their names, that one saw his partner being attacked so he leaped in, bruised up. Um, myself, other trans people, other people of color, LGBT people also attacked. There was 25 people altogether that were arrested that, that year, and it was just an onslaught. We're talking about elders to young people. It was just a horrible, horrible attack for just marching. And this was retaliation because of the panic the year before. With that said, it led to a long, year-long struggle where we like, went to Plymouth all year long and basically or organize the party, organize with supporters this boycott because we were all on trial. And we're all, particularly again, similar to the bus drivers, the leaders, Madonna, Matowi, um, Steve Kirschbaum, again, we're all facing felony charges for this so called, um, for these, for these, when they brutalized and arrested us. With that said, United American Indians won $50,000 out of that case. They won the right to have plaques all over Plymouth telling the truth about the history, about that there are indigenous leaders who's, who, who were disemboweled, their necks cut off and put on spikes in the middle of Plymouth Square, and tell that reality. So all the beautiful kumbaya -ness of what people think is America's homeland is all a joke, and for people to know that, and that's in every single place. And so at this point in time, now at this point, there's about 200 to 400 people that come every year regularly. It is a, just want to be clear, it is a usually largely you know, like mix event of all different nationalities, all different ages, all different sexualities of people that come and are with folks every year. So we want to encourage everyone to get on the bus. That was what my talk is about. Get on the bus. Come to National Day of Mourning this year. The, the bus tickets, sliding scale, you know, give what you can, $30, $45 if you can. 
If you, if you really need a, a discount, we'll talk about it because we want to make sure that everyone that wants to go, you should go. It's a transformative experience. If you haven't been yet, we encourage you. If you've only been one time, come again. This is a horrible, horrible thing to say. I'm not, you know, climate, climate um, changes, global, you know, global warming, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But I have to say, it's been a lot warmer. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a lot. We see people are laughing. But back in the day, Monica can attest to it. It was, thank you. Back in the day, because you're right there by the water, by, by the ocean, it was like, Kim, it was freezing. It's not so bad anymore. <laughs> I just want to put that out. So please, I say still bundle up, but it's not, it's not that, you know, I, I, I can't feel my nose. I, it's not like that anymore. So anyway, with any, without any more, I just want to, again, encourage everyone. This is like, we, I mean, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing. We fought for the right for a peaceful protest because of struggle. That, that uh, National Day of Mourning has become the event that you can bring your children to because back in the day we were fighting tooth and limb just to have it. And it does, and even something that they did, all the churches, all the places around there, they won over that town to, to, to be more inclusive and friendly to the, to the National Day of Mourning, which is also a very powerful thing. We've changed the political climate of, of, of Plymouth for at least that day. And I think it's really important that this is a struggle that, that has been supported by the party for 46? Somebody help me. 46? 40, 40, 43 years. 43 years. And that, I think, is an awesome and an amazing task. So anyway, with all of that said, comrade, please see Sharon, myself, Sahai for tickets. And um, hope to see you on the bus 6 o'clock in the morning here. Yeah, 6.30, 6.30 um, for the National Day of Morning. Thanks, comrades.